We are all set to go. Okay. All right, we will call to order the Planning Commission meeting for Bowling Green, Ohio for June of 2024. Jamie, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Bati? Yes. Ms. Broadwell? Here. Ms. Ennis? Here. Mr. McComber? Mr. Phillips? Here. Mr. Remus? Here. Ms. Sleek? Here. Mr. Stalter? Here. And Mr. Waddle? Here. Okay. Um, first order of business is the approval of the minutes for April 3rd of 2024 meeting. Uh, did anybody have any revisions to the meeting? Looks to be a no, uh, no, so those minutes are approved. Um, next up, we have lobby visitation. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak to the council on any business not on the agenda for the evening, <coughs> please step forward. What were the planning commission? You What's, said council. I didn't know oh, if you meant sorry. to say council. That's okay. Planning commission, planning council. Does not look like we have any takers. <laughs> so we will close the lobby visitation. Um, next up on the agenda is the election of officers. Um, this is um, we typically on this one, I usually Bob does this, but uh, since he's not here this time, I get to run it down. And uh, uh, we, in parliamentary fashion, we will, you know, somebody will put forth a chair, um, a vice chair, and a representative to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, they will be seconded and voted upon. So uh, I will actually put forth Bob McCumber as the chairperson for this next round. Um, do I have a second? I'll second. I'll st All right, Jamie, can you call the roll? <coughs> Mr. Bati? Yes. Ms. Broadwell? Yes. Ms. Ennis? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. <laughs> Remus? Yes. Ms. Sleek? Yes. Mr. Stalter? Yes. And Mr. Waddle? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Does Bob know? He's not even here. This is this is a fun game. Yeah. Lucky him. It's a perfect <laughs> Who else is absent today? <laughs> this is what happens if you don't come to the meetings. That's, That's right. right. I was going to mention we do have a Bob here. We should welcome Bob Waddle mm -hmm. um, as the newest member of the Planning Commission. Uh, thank you for participating with us, Bob. And um, he was on the Zoning Board of Appeals for many, many years. Oh. So we're glad to see him back. And then we want to thank Nate Spitler for his service on the Planning Commission since he hit his term limit. And um, we appreciate his service. So thank you. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, I nominate him as the vice chair. <laughs> Welcome, Bob. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh. I'll second that. See? And we have a second. <laughs> All right. Jamie, can you call the roll, please? Thanks, Rick. Mr. Bati. Yes. Ms. Broadwell. Yes. Ms. Ennis. Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Remus? Yes. Ms. Sleek? Yes. Mr. Stalter? Yes. Mr. Waddle? Yes, under protest. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Wow. And I nominate that Judy stays on as the Board of Appeals person. Is that okay with you, Judy? I, I would like to give someone else the uh, opportunity if there's someone on the board that would really like to do the no, zoning board. No, thank you. Man, I got I must have a really popular position then, guys. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> doing a great job. Who seconded? Somebody did. I did. Okay. All right. Yeah. I have a check. Can you call the roll, please? Mr. Bati. Yes. Ms. Broadwell. Yes. Ms. Ennis. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Remus. Yes. Ms. Sleek. Yes. Mr. Stalter. Yes. And Mr. Waddle. Yes. Okay. Well, we have our representatives for the next year. Um, up next, we have a, uh, under subdivisions, we have a plat um, for Kogan's Crossing to vote upon. Uh, do we have any other information on that one? Yeah, I can review my 
information for you here in a minute. I was going to pull up the map. So here is the aerial view of the proposed final plat for plat nine that is um, with the yellow hash marks there and that would fill in basically the streets of Longford and Wexford and that road is actually done and all of the infrastructure. Um, so as part of our subdivision process for a final plat, the regulations do require that any remaining work um, be supplied to the city with a financial guarantee. So they have submitted the financial guarantee that's required, mm -hmm. which is really just for the sidewalk and any restoration activities, seating, mulching, and the right-of-way. And that is for $80,470, so we did get that. Um, also, the, it does um, comply with the preliminary plan that was approved, and um, it does create 20 lots um, to expand that existing subdivision. And we do have Shane Huntley uh, of Energy Land and Infrastructure here if you have any questions for him. Otherwise, that's basically it for this final plat. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shane Huntley, uh, Energy Land and Infrastructure. Just uh, if anyone has any questions, that sums it up pretty well. Anybody have any questions? I don't. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't either. It's... No. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. Amy, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Broadwell? Yes. Ms. Ennis? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Remus? Yes. Ms. Sleek? Yes. Mr. Stalter? Yes. Mr. Waddle? Yes. And Mr. Bati? Yes. All right. Yes, we approved. Um, up next will be the final plat for the Wood Acres subdivision located off East Gypsy Lane Road. Can you run this down for us a little bit? Absolutely. So here's an aerial view of the property highlighted here again, right adjacent to I-75 off East Gypsy Lane Road. Hmm. Here is a copy of the final plat that was in your packet and this would create seven lots. Um, the city did approve the construction plans back in February, so construction did start there. Um, they do have, from what I understand, most of the utilities in. Um, if you drove by, you'll notice that the road is not in there yet, so that new public road would be called Inspire Lane that would access those lots. So we did have a larger financial guarantee we needed to collect as part of the final plat prior to putting in front of the commission for $247,320 there. That, um, again, it's a lot of road work still left there and restoration once that done is done and then the sidewalk. So again, a bigger financial guarantee there, but they do um, want to build the two respite homes. They've actually already submitted those site plans for that, and they're eager to get started on those once the subdivision is approved and then the roadway completed. Um, otherwise, I think that's it, unless you have any specific questions for me. Um, I do believe that we have Greg Feller, a Feller Finch here, if you have any questions for him. I actually have a question. There are only going to be two respite homes on this property? Um, from what I understand, I can't speak for them, but that is what their initial plan is as part as part as I'm sorry, somebody else is here for them yes. as okay. part of the grant funding they received. So, so I'm sure there's going to be more on this entire property. Well, uh, Andy, that was not for right? so representing what kind of work we do for this okay. project. And uh, what we're doing is uh, we're building two respite homes on lots 7636 and 7639 okay. for the Wood County Board of DD, and it's for multi system youth. The rest of the development is also institutional. It's zoned institutional today, and the board will be working with uh, outside agencies to build more institutional adjacent uses on that property to support their functions at the Woodlane campus and with the respite homes that they're building on the two parcels. So uses as, as though they're going to expand the industries, they're going to have work there, or is it going to be cohabitating? I can't answer that because I don't know. Uh, right now, the two respite homes are what the board has funding to con to build. Uh, we're accepting bids on those next week. Okay. So we're getting those under construction. Um, there isn't any dedicated funding for more new construction on the site by the board of DD, but 
I, I like I said, I do know that they have intentions of working with outside agencies to bolster the use for the institutional uh, zoning uh, to support their current current day functions. Okay, so you're not sure if it's going to be like a day hab or if it's going to be another home or group homes. Correct. Or yeah, I don't I don't have an answer for you on that. Okay. Because they don't know. Frankly, I mean, they're, they're whatever the funding to. is, they'll accommodate the funding. Is that what you're saying? And they'll apply for grants for specific. I don't know that that's the only driver for them, oh, but okay. I'm sure that that would be a, a, a strong consideration if there's certain funding available for specific types of new construction projects. Okay. Are, I'm sorry, sir. Are you here on behalf of the Wood County? Do you know what the no, potential I, would I, be? I typically. If you could go there to the podium. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not Greg. I'm Don. <laughs> sorry, Don. Don and I also missed Andy in the audience. I didn't see you. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, I, I don't know specifically what their plans are, but typically in a, a development like this, the plan would be to do the similar type projects on all the lots. Correct. Like respite homes for the whole, <clears throat> Yeah, right? I would imagine that's okay. most likely what they plan on doing. Or Again, some type it's of be day habilitation or, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Is there anybody else with questions for those here? Do I have a motion to approve? Yes. Second. And a second. Jamie, call the roll, please. Ms. Ennis. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Remus. Yes. Ms. Sleek. Yes. Mr. Stalter. Yes. Mr. Waddle. Yes. Mr. Bati. Yes. And Ms. Broadwell. Yes. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up next, we have reports from the representative of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Judy Ennis. I'm, I'm sorry, but this, the reports from the Zoning Board are going to be longer than the entire agenda for the evening. <laughs> uh, I have the April 10th um, meeting here before me, and we had six variances request. The first one was Kimberly Barton, 814 Rose Common Street, has requested a variance to allow the construction of a four foot by 15 foot driveway expansion, which would be three feet five inches wider than the 10 foot maximum width allowed. That was granted. Uh, the second one is Delana Bell, 224 Western Avenue, has requested a variance to allow the construction of a 12 foot by 27 foot driveway expansion which would be two feet, eight inches wider than the maximum width allowed based on the width of the garage to which it leads. That also was unanimously passed. Joseph Easterday, uh, 135 Vial Avenue, has requested a variance to allow the construction of a 38-foot, 8-inch by 9-foot, 6-inch driveway expansion, which would be two feet, eight inches wider than the maximum width allowed based on the width of the garage to which it leads and would encroach six feet, six inches into the required three foot setback to the property line to the north, which is an alley. That also was granted. Do you see a pattern here on these driveway expansions? <laughs> uh, Dominic Stutzman, on behalf of the Black Swamp Players, has requested a variance to allow the construction of a 14 by 55 foot by 46 by 64 foot driveway expansion, which would encroach three feet into the required three foot rear yard setback to the property line to the east at 115 East Oak Street. That also passed. S Sarah Meisman, on behalf of Ashland Bancroft LLC, requested a variance to allow the construction of two signs, 15 by three feet three foot SF and 24 by 13 SF on the gas canopy at 525 North Main Street, which would exceed the maximum of three signs per lot with a total of five signs. That one was not granted. The last one is David Bilo on behalf of Precision Alloy Services has requested a variance to allow the construction of a 65 foot, eight inch by 200 foot addition, a warehouse which would provide four street, street trees instead of the required nine street trees based on a 350 foot of, of front, front of footage of the lots. One street tree required per 40 linear feet. And to provide four trees at the western lot line instead of the required larger buffer 
a strip of land 30 feet in depth with at least five canopy trees per 100 feet of length and at least 20 shrubs per 100 linear, linear feet. Between the IE Innovation and Employment Zone at 726 Innovation Drive, which is adjacent to the A1 Agriculture and one in a, oh, um, I in an in Institutional, based on the 350 foot, the larger buffer requirement would be 18 canopy or evergreen trees, 14 ornamental trees, and 70 shrubs. Did you get all that? Um, that ended up in a tie, so uh, there was no action taken on it because it was there was a tie. But I'll wait for the next meeting because it'll, it'll come back. Okay, the May meeting. They have to wait. Kyle Embody of Zoning Resources on behalf of Kroger's has requested a variance to allow the construction of an 8 feet by 5 inch by 14 feet 7 inch wall sign, 122.7 square feet, which would be 10.7 square feet larger than the 112 square foot maximum allowed sign and would cause this business to further exceed the 336 square foot maximum sign aggregate by 309.5 square feet for a total of 655.5 square feet at 1094 North Main Street. That was granted. Jason Miller, 100 Sandridge Road, had requested a variance to allow the construction of a 10-foot by 12-foot accessory structure, which would encroach 15 feet into the 25-foot required front yard setback to the east corner lot front yard that faces Indian Ridge Drive in the R1 low-density residential zone. I will tell you that I did recuse myself from that particular vote, and it, and it passed. Now, David Bilo, on behalf of Precision Alloy Services, has requested a variance to allow the construction of a 60-foot, 65-foot, 8-inch by 200-foot addition warehouse, which would provide six street trees instead of the required nine street trees based on the 350-foot of frontage on the lots, one street tree required per 40 linear feet and would provide 10 canopy or evergreen trees, 18 required, two ornamental trees, 14 required, and 35 shrubs, 70 required at the western lot line and scattered around the site. Instead of the required large buffer, a strip of land 30 feet in depth with at least five canopy trees per 100 feet of length and at least 20 shrubs per 100 linear feet between the IE Innovation and Employment Zoning at 726 Innovation Drive, which is adjacent to the A1 Agriculture and I1 Innovation Drive. Uh, because um, Mr. Bilo had, we had suggested that the, when the, the Arians did pass the first time that he worked with the city arboretist and they come up with a, uh, with a, a plan, uh, he did so. Uh, and so this is the second time on this on the motion it was passed. So we was granted. That's good. Okay. That's the end of my rather lengthy report. Thank but we you. are meeting next Wednesday and it's gonna be a real exciting driveway expansion. So called a barn burner, but apparently Yeah, not. keep keep your keep keep an, keep your intent keep an attendance here, guys. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. All right, thank you, Judy, for that report. Um, Heather, you have a planning report? Report. Yes, um, it's handing handed down right now the line. Uh, so as far as permits so far, uh, we've issued 178 compared to 146 at this time last year, so we are up a bit. We've had 15 single family housing starts compared to 14 at this time last year. Um, since we've last met, we issued permits for the addition to Precision Alloy that Judy had mentioned needed a variance for the, the landscaping and buffering. That's at 726 Innovation Drive. And uh, we also issued a permit for an addition at 134 Woodgate for Ohio Logistics. We issued a permit for the Brat House for an addition at 115 East Court Street. And then we issued a permit for an alteration uh, at 1080 South Main Street for Harbor Freight which is a new business in the city. And then under review or on hold is new construction for a quick trip at the southeast corner of East Wooster and South Dunbridge um, for a also new construction for a wing stop at 1502 East Wooster Street, which would also be a demolition of the existing building there. And then we have a permit under review for moving the Bowling Green High School practice fields um, to accommodate the, the new construction there. So that would be along Fairview Avenue where there's some green space there adjacent to 
the baseball and softball diamonds. Um, and then for subdivisions, we have Kogan's Crossing Plat 10 construction plans close to approval. They are waiting some environmental related permits to happen with that before they can dig. And then to St. Springs, the staff is close to um, finishing review of those um, construction plans and um, they are very eager, eager to start that new subdivision which would be at um, Nor Newton and uh, Brim Road. And then we have, um, we just mentioned Wood Acres and I had told you that that's still under construction that you just approved and then they had applied for the two homes they are building with a grant. As far as the uh, planning documents, community action plan, and we are dealing with um, the micro grants right now. So if you remember that um, basically came from the community action plan and we're encouraging groups that have um, basically any kind of event or project that relates back to the community action plan that you can apply for these micro grants. They're due on June 7th, so obviously pretty quick here by Friday at 4.30. And we're happy that's still been going for quite a few years to help really revitalize neighborhoods. Uh, subdivision regulations, Chapter 151, those are still in the queue to be updated. And um, also our access management policies and guidelines, we did have our first meeting with the steering committee. And thank you, Mark, for serving on that. Um, half the battle was getting everybody together to start reviewing those and working with our consultant, Manik and Smith. So that'll be a good process and excited to have Mark involved and um, all the different perspectives. It's a really important tool for development and it really um, is critical that we have safe roadways and deal with access. So um, very riveting, right, Mark, your first meeting? It was great. <laughs> Actually, I, I learned a lot. I mean, it was my first introduction to a lot of um, the terminology or whatever, so... Moving forward, I'll be able to report instead of Heather. <laughs> you go, guy. I will, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Um, and then as far as um, some other actions, City Council did approve the annexation of the um, City Electric substation that you had recommended approval of that annexation and also the zoning of that to be commercial. So that would have been last month that they approved that. I am working on some minor edits to the zoning code and I think Judy kind of alluded to some of those when she had been re reading the various uh, variance requests such as driveways. So. Um, I hope to have those to you soon in the next month or two. Depends how um, more things come up. It seems like I get something done and then something new comes up. So that'll be fun, I think. We'll, we'll enjoy that new review. It's been close to a year already, and it's important that we relook at that document and make sure we're updating as needed, but yet still, of course, um, sticking to our plan recommendations and implementing the community goals. Um, Historic Preservation Commission, I mentioned they've been really busy. They actually set their very first public hearing to um, have their first historic district potentially designated, and so that will come on your lap eventually. It'll probably be a few months, but um, just giving you a heads up on that. And then we just finished celebrating National Preservation Month in May. You might have saw the History Lives Here signs around town. And then we're excited that our historical signs that um, we designed will are in production. So in the next month, month and a half, you'll see those installed, and we'll have a nice celebration, <coughs> and can't wait for you to read all of them. So that's it, unless you have any specific questions for me. I don't know who did the hometown flags, but they're just awesome. I, I just want to cry when I drive down and look at those. So kudos to whomever was, was doing that. Yeah, they are very cool. Very cool. They're really cool. Anybody uh, got anything for the good of the order? Then uh, we will adjourn this meeting. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Bill. Bob. Bob. I'm saying unless Bob wants to give you a